I'm looking for an au pair, hopefully to start within the next 10 days or so. You just have to put all your trust, don't you, into someone that really, you don't really know very well. It's hard to trust a stranger with your child, but thousands of parents have no choice. I suppose as a mum, one is, always has the dreaded question at the back of your mind, could they turn out to be child molesters? This film follows three very different families over six months to see how their choices paid off. I have to trust all the girls from the word off, otherwise it would be pointless even inviting them into your house. One smoker essential, able to cook simple healthy meals from fresh raw ingredients, I think. I don't want the, I don't want the ones that just want to open a can. Must be fluent in English or French. An advantage if they knew South, South London. Fun outgoing. Jilly and her PA Victoria compose an internet advert for an au pair to start straight away. Four. To help look after seven year old. To help look after Poppy. Yes, Poppy. And I'm in it just now, it's a dog. Rafiki. What I'm looking for is somebody who is bright, amusing, intelligent and responsible and who can truly be, um, as far as possible, my substitute, basically. We go through quite a few au pairs. In the last year, I think we've had about four. Uh, the last one, I came home one day and sat on the stairs with Fred and Fred said, Dad, you're just going to have to get a new girl, it's not working. And when your son says that, it's kind of, you realise that this is what he considers to be life. Andrew's a safety engineer and often works away from home. He's separated and has to rely on au pairs to look after his children, Caprice, who's four, and his unusually named five-year-old son. He's Fred V. Bart. He's Fred after my dad, V after my mum Vera, and Bart after Bart Simpson. Um, so he's Fred V. Bart Jennings. At the school, they actually thought he was Fred Bart V, because they actually thought the V was five. <laughs> I'm smoking, easy going females. I have two kids, boy five, girl four. Willing to help around the house and babysit one or two evenings a week. Well, I really want to be a nurse. It's like something I've always wanted to do, but I ended up having the children sooner rather than later. And I just think now, you know, it's my time to do it. If I don't do it now, I'll never do it, so... Why she couldn't have waited another year, I really don't know, but... ..cos all this is going on and everything's just an absolute nightmare. For the first time in a long time, I feel as though I'm... ..doing something rather than just being here on a full-time basis, even though I adore the children and... ..you know, I'm just sort of doing it for us, our family and myself. You know, the only thing that ever gets talked about is university au pair. Never gets talked about my job, never gets talked about what I want to do. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, oh. Oh. I've got your um, details from the au pair website. I live in Bognor Regis, West Sussex. Um, I've got three boys, um, eight, four and two. Um, I'm looking for an au pair, hopefully to start within the next ten days or so. I'm leaving a message for Lucia. I suppose out of 200 au pairs, by the time you start looking and you whittle all of them down, you're left with about four and then you ring them all up and they've either found families or, you know, they don't want to live in Bognor, they want to be in London. Hi, my name's Claire. I, I rang you just a minute ago. I'm ringing regarding au pair. Can you say that once more? Do you speak English? I didn't really make much sense of that. At all. <laughs> That's an interesting one. She looks like a bit of a glamour, glamour girl. Jilly got 85 replies, and she meticulously checks their CVs for possible clues. I think one has to be very aware when you're advertising on the net that you're likely to get all sorts of people for all sorts of reasons, reasons mm. applying. And in this day and age, sadly, I have to be very aware of that. Ah, 
no, sorry, this one's a definite no. July to August was an au pair and clean in Newbury, England for Jane. Brackets, I'm sorry I've lost my mobile and lost the contact for my previous family. I can send you our common photos. No, that's a no. <laughs> sorry. Well, it sounds a bit dodgy. Well, I think what we should do is prepare a checklist of things that, um, so that sort of tick, bo tick boxes so, so, that, so get, that we I can... I get the ad. Jilly runs her own business, finding multi-million pound houses for private clients. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world in, in the property market and it's, it's vicious. Okay. Things can go wrong at any point and for the weirdest of reasons. I've lost a deal over one pair of curtains and it was a 1.8 million pound deal. I couldn't operate without no pets. It's, it's as simple as that. I, I did try for nearly two years. And what I was finding was that I was, well, obviously, I was only able to work a much, more, much shorter day. And I cannot afford any downtime because I am the only breadwinner. Eight. No. Please. No. Are you tired? No. Yeah, I know. However many replies he gets, Andrew's got a unique way of choosing au pairs. Bed. I tend to just sort of go for whoever phones first is the winner because. If you meet 10 girls, the chances are all 10 girls are going to be nice. And the sad thing is it means you've got to let one, nine of them down. <laughs> no. No. Nice. Bed, come on. Look, it's midnight. This way. Quick march. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Bed. <laughs> After a thorough search, Claire managed to meet just one au pair who'd consider the job, a Turkish girl called Perrin. Luckily, the interview went well. Should we could do some dinner for Perrin? Yeah. Gee, I wonder what Turkish food is like. She's Turkish, isn't she? Turkish No, she won't like it. They're off to the station to pick her up. Perrin hasn't met the boys yet, but if they get on, she'll start immediately. The only thing that makes me anxious is the children, unfortunately. <laughs> If anything's going to ruin it, ruin it, it's children that will ruin it. You've got to be good, Lewis, haven't you? Otherwise, if Perrin doesn't come, Mummy will have to stop her course and then I'll never be a nurse. Hi, Perrin. <laughs> good. Hello. Oh, look at the little angels. Not. Yeah. You all right? Did you, yeah. you just got here? Have you just come off the train yet? Yeah, yeah, no. Lewis, sometimes Perrin she doesn't understand everything straight away, yeah? So we have to talk slowly, yeah? OK, then. Perrin's come down from London, hoping to be Claire's new au pair. What do you... What drink do you like, Perrin? I like uh, wine and yep. whiskey and whiskey. And whiskey? Yes, oh, I don't. Yeah. I don't like whiskey. Jack Daniels, I like. Oh, Jack Daniels. Claire's priority is finding childcare for her boys. Right, you put all the rubbish in there. I don't want it on the floor. So she's keen that Perrin takes to life in Bognor. We're having a glass of wine, aren't we, Perrin? Glass oh, wine. <coughs> what one do you want? Because yeah. that's all I've got of white, actually. Oh, no, 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 for now. It's OK. Sure. Oh, thank you. Oh, well, cheers <laughs> to my au pair, Perrin. <laughs> thank you. Back home in Turkey, Perrin works in a bank and her priority is improving her language skills. I want to learn English because I want to improve my career. In the Turkey is important uh, if, if, I, if I speak English very well. Do you think you're a difficult family for au pairs to put well, into? I, I wouldn't want to come <coughs> to a family of three boys, no. Just always watch, watch okay. them, yeah. Cameron, he's very up to mischief. M. Um. I S C. Yeah. H. H. I. I. E. E. F. Ah, yeah. Okay. All the time. Okay. And Jaden. Mischief, okay. yeah. As well as being briefed about the boys, Perrin will have to get to grips with the everyday politics of her new family. I've been doing that extension since January. Yeah, but it takes a long time, doesn't it? Yeah, well. 
Mummy yeah. makes decisions. <laughs> yeah. No, Pete Mummy just can say is that. But... Full of shit. <laughs> full of shit. <laughs> you I just. Shit? It just goes this, Perrin. In one ear like that. <laughs> Straight out the other one. Kill it. Do you want to have some, your sandwich, Peter? Because this little girl's going to arrive very soon. Which little girl? Um, she's called, what's the first one called? She's called Emma, I think. A little girl? Well, she's a big girl. She's a big girl. In Chelsea, Jilly's narrowed her shortlist to two. And now she wants Poppy to take charge of the interviews. They need to be able to read you a story if you want a bedtime story and your mum's going out. They need to be able to cook. Well, yes. Yeah. Um, somebody at the door, Can you manage? Hello, how are you? First up is ML from Turkey. Back home, she was a secretary. Hello, Poppy. Bring it in, do. Come on in. Poppy, why don't, why don't you ask ML about her brothers and sisters? Because they're very different. Well, they're not different. They're just different. Different. They're 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 different. Gönül and Sema. And what's your dad's name? It's Nedim. <laughs> this is one of my de designs for a dress. Ooh. One of my imaginative ones. This is... I felt she was quite shy around no. Poppy, and as I say, I mean, particularly the body language. Yeah, I think if she'd have been a little bit more self-conscious, she would have been com more coming down to her level and more saying, right, you know, what are we going to do today? And taking charge of it. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking for. How many marks out of ten would you give her? Um, well, I'd try to be generous. I'd probably give her six or seven. And that's not my... I'm a hard taskmaster, as you can see. <laughs> me no mummy. Obviously, will you give her a big wave? See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, my <laughs> Bye. 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 If you had to give her marks out of ten, how many marks out of ten would you give her? Twelve. Twelve? <laughs> oh, you're much more generous than your mummy is. The next hopeful is Anna from Brazil. She's left behind a career in personnel and wants to improve her English. Come on in. Come, Come on in, Rafiki. Oh, Do you want to ask me something? Are there rabbits in Brazil? Sorry? Are there rabbits in Brazil? Ah, rabbits? Uh, yes, but we, we have monkeys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. alligator. Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know we have many uh, snacks? Snacks? I don't really like snakes, <laughs> especially reticulated pythons or poisonous yes, ones. Yes, that's dangerous. Uh, do you know uh, who I saw yesterday? No. Prince Harry. You saw Prince Harry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> who you like more, Prince William or Prince Harry? Prince William. William? Yes, he's a bit handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Jilly has been a single parent since Poppy was a baby. I was going out with Poppy's father for three or four months period before I realised that there were difficulties in the relationship that, that I couldn't I couldn't continue with, and I um, told him him that basically. Two weeks later, I suddenly realised that things weren't quite right, and that, that um, found that I was pregnant with Poppy, which was completely unplanned. I was 45 and it was a big shock to my system. I'd always wanted children that I hadn't anticipated in those circumstances. Not that I regret one, one bit of it and she's a fantastic child. But it's still very tough um, financially and, and emotionally and psychologically. You, I think you have to be an incredibly strong constitution to make a success of being a single parent. Fred's life jacket. I've got a feeling it's in here, but he's not really going to need it anyway. Fred's life jacket. I knew I'd find it. Mummy's got to go in a minute because I have to go and feed the doggy. I have to go and feed the doggy. <laughs> <laughs>
Gemma and Andrew split up amicably, and she helps with the children. But as she works weekends and Andrew sometimes works away, they need an au pair to fill the gaps. Oh, I love you. I love you too, Mummy. Thank Good you, Freddie. <laughs> well, today there's an American girl coming, and whether she decides to take the room or not, I don't know. I've said to Andrew that if I don't like the look of her, I don't want her, or, you know, I have to like her at face value, and, you know, I have to like her to have her in the house with the kids, obviously. What are our duties for you? Just keeping the place just a little bit tidy, really, so that when I come home with an evening, all right, I've still got to feed the kids, but as soon as we're surrounded by takeaways, that's easy, I can handle that side of it. Andrew's going to pick up an American girl, and Gemma's come round to check that she's suitable. OK, see you in a minute. Uh, Fabergé is outside the station. Oh, you're a bit noisy. What's up, mate? Yeah, are we are you coming with Daddy? Yeah, you coming in the car? Yeah. yeah? What's her name? Fabergé. See you in a minute, babe! I had a girlfriend around who's um, a feng shui consultant and quite good on astrology, and we looked at their star signs and their Chinese horoscopes as well. And we reckoned that Anna, um, who was a Libra... Uh, was she a Libra monkey? She was. Um, that she would have a nice lightness of spirit. Being the Libra, she would like beautiful things, which I, mean, I can relate to because I'm a Libra. She really want uh, a perfect person, but this person don't exist. So I will try to be perfect, <laughs> but I don't know if I, I can. How's it? Because we are very Catholic, and it's, it's good because when you are alone and you don't have anybody, you can talk with God. Back home in Brazil, Anna grew up with servants. Now the housekeeping will all be down to her. Hi, Fabi. Uh, whereabouts will I find you? You're on the steps. Oh, you're on the steps. Oh, okay. Um, then, hey, yeah, I can see you got a red hand bandana on. Okay, I'm in a red car uh, that's just driven down, and I'm going to drive back. So, if you come down the stairs. What do you know about Tabaché? Not an awful lot. Um, just um, how old is she? Don't, that I don't know. <laughs> what nationality is she? I think Andrew said American, but I'm not certain. I think I just heard him saying American. Um, Has she got childcare experience? I don't know that either. Um, Andrew hasn't given me much information about her. Hello. Oh, Grease Lightning, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm Tabergé. Tabergé. <laughs> It's just like Fabergé, but with the T, everyone tells okay. me. That's the easiest way to remember it, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> I learned that a long time ago in elementary school. Oh, okay. Oh, 
First, the most important thing is when they meet the kids, it's how they react. If they tend to warm to the child immediately, then I feel so much more relaxed because I know that they they will bond with them. <laughs> but that was fun. Ready? It's Mummy on the back. <laughs> Where are you from? Texas. Texas, Massachusetts. Oh, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you lived in England? Exactly three weeks and two days. <laughs> three weeks and two, two days. days, wow. The only connections I have with Texas is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, yeah. What um, do you think of her? Yeah. Well, no, in about ten minutes. <laughs> she seems pleasant enough. She's playful. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Yeah, she's doing good. There's no blades underneath. He can't hurt himself. And all I really want is just someone to just help keep the place tidy. That's all. Okay. And when I say tidy, like I said, it doesn't have to be tidy, tidy. Just tidy-ish. Um, obviously, we don't want people that are going to be... We don't want heavy drunk people or anything like that, and we don't... Well, to be honest, I know... Yeah, no, yeah, it makes sense. So, um, I mean, we don't mind people coming over as long as they're aware that there are... Kids two, in the There are two that. little kids in the house, and obviously they have to... They will have to respect that. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, a remote with a stereo. Oh. Andrew and Gemma are satisfied, and Tab agrees to move in immediately. Is. Can it get any better? Andrew offers to collect her bags. It's Claire's first day back at college. Parents had just one day to settle in and now she's in sole charge of the boys. Just horrible, just leaving the house thinking, well, I'm not going to be back for seven hours. And I hope everything's going to be OK. Just have to hope. You just have to put all your trust, don't you, into someone that really, you don't really know very well. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mummy. They're so demanding. And they're all different ages, so they've all got their own needs. and. It, it's going to be very hard for Perry. Very hard. Give me a kiss. Have a nice day at school. Some orange trees. <laughs> orange trees. See you later. See you then. You'll be alright, yeah? Yeah. Be good. Any naughtiness, and I'm going to be straight back from work and I'm going to sort you out. I'll tell you. Yes. Perrin's got 20 minutes to get Lewis to school, and Claire's forgotten to give her the right key. Lewis, do you know keys? Keys. Where is um, keys? That's the wrong key. Okay. That's the wrong key. It must be an easy one, it must. No keys are outside. It's still in front. That's what? It's the wrong button. Which phone uh, does your mother use? Um, that one. Her phone, she used her phone. Yeah, and another phone. Home phone? Yeah. No, she no. always uses her phone. Yeah. Always use her phone. That's what old one is. Yeah. <laughs> is oh, there oh, another yeah. phone? Home no, phone? you have to do it on your phone. Welcome to T-Mobile. Currently, you do not have enough credit to make a call. Your total balance is now zero. Oh, I yeah. or mine? No, that's your one. No. Just yeah. check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perrin's been rescued. You, Pete's I'm come sorry. back with the right key. No, you didn't, you didn't know it was in there. It was on the side, so it was in her bag. Okay. You'd never have found it, so... It's half late right now. Yes, come on. <laughs> we late. Oh, I'm... back. You have to go back. You're not allowed to come in with me. You have to stay at the gate. You have to stay there. You have to go back. You have to go back. Come yeah, now. yeah. You have to go back. Yeah. Go on then. You have to go home. Ah. 
Anna's first day coincides with Jilly's move to South London. Back in Chelsea, she employed a part-time cleaner and a dog walker. She's hoping Anna can combine both jobs and look after Poppy. With the pressure of paying school fees, she wants to economise. Do you like the house? So I had a quick chat with her in the car and just sort of said, you've got to tell her now, today, that you're in charge and absolutely lay the law down, because otherwise she will run rings round you. She didn't really know what run rings round meant. Um, so I sort of tried to explain that to her, but I'm very keen that she establishes who's in charge right now, today, because Poppy's a bright little button and she will have her on toast, as they say. Have a hot lemon bowl. Oh, you mean a finger bowl? Yeah, I think Oh, well, my dear, how, how delicate. She'd love you to have a little bowl with some warm water and some lemon in it, you know, so she can dip her fingers in and clean her fingers. <laughs> the princess would like a finger oh, bowl. Oh, you ice cream. Please, Anna. Did I hear the please? Yeah. Please, Anna, for me? Yes, with lemon, please. With lemon? Yeah, you need, a, you need a squeeze of lemon. That's to... cold water, not warm water. Okay. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Prince. Oh. Anna, I want in my water. Oh, sorry. My one is that one. This one? Yeah, this one. Poppy, hmm? Poppy, can I just say something? Yeah. There was a, there would have, a, there was a better way of saying that, Joanna. How, how would you, how could you have said it differently in a better way? Please, can I have my water back because I'd like to yeah, you know, drink it? Yeah, that would be much. Sorry, that was my fault. I didn't ask for it. It's okay. It's just, it's just that, you know, she was a bit sharp in picking you up on it, that's all. I need politeness from my baby daughter. Hello. Look. It is. If you don't trust her, why didn't you say something before? Back at home, Gemma's having second thoughts about Tab. I haven't ruined it for anyone. Why don't you just listen to sense? It is. Look, why don't you... But Andrew's perfectly happy with their choice. One more suitcase. Oh my she seems day. pleasant enough. She's got a nice, she seems to have a nice disposition and... Yeah, I mean, that's why I never ever interview more than one girl at a time because um, I invariably always just go with the first girl that appears anyway because I'm crap at judge of character. I mean, I think everyone's a nice person, so. You can fake a reference, can't you? Trying to prove a reference is nigh on probably impossible. Tab's leaving the hostel in West London where she shared a room with five other students. Is there any more result with Gemma? No, she's more upset than before. So then I said to her, you know, if you, if you have reservations about uh, Tab, why didn't you say, why didn't you say them when, when she was there? Because, you know, we have to sort of trust, we're going to be trusting her with the kids when, uh, when we go out, so you can't really, you don't want to leave them with someone you don't trust, and that's why Gemma wanted to interview her first because she said, I don't, I don't want to leave the kids with someone I don't trust. I'm just trying to be realistic and practical, I'm trying to keep my job and keep everyone happy at work happy. And obviously, every time I inconvenience them, it doesn't look good on me, so I'm just trying to uh, cause as few waves as possible on that front. Hello. I'm not shouting. Quiet. Yeah, feel free to open up all the windows and okay. sure you'll be over the moon to have them open. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like a big house. Uh, I didn't know. I thought the mom wasn't going to be there and I would assume that, that he's a single father so he's really, really going to be busy on his cell phone and and giving me all these tasks that I have to do <laughs> and then stuff like that. But it actually was the total opposite, which actually made me feel a lot better. At first it was like a shocker, but then I was like, oh, okay, real people, <laughs> real family. I have, you know, a real London family.
Clara asked uh, me, text me. Uh, she said, hi Perin, how are you? Getting on? Are the boys okay? Clara, kiss. At home in Turkey, Perrin lives on the coast. The it's okay. her first morning in charge and she's missing the sea. This way, I think. Oh. Just the worry of, I hope they're being good and I hope they're going to hold her hand when, you know, she's crossing the road and lots of um, little things. I don't need hands. No, no, no. I'm Excuse me. Out. Where is the sea? I want to go see near the sea. To the seaside? Beach? Yeah. Beach? Yeah. Go down here to the shop. Yeah. And do a right. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. Follow that all the way down. Just okay. keep going and going and going. Okay. And then at the bottom you'll see a holiday sure. cap. Do a left and that's it okay. basically. Okay. Thank all you. Right. How long does it take? What, walking? Yeah. Oh, good 20 minutes, 25 20 minutes. minutes. Okay. Walking, yeah. Thank you. you. Thank you. All right, love. If you had the money, no object, would you have a Turkish au pair? Or would you have an English au pair? Well, it depends on what she looked like. <laughs> You'd have to have an English au pair, sensibly. Child will end up ordering kebabs and things. <laughs> OK, 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 go. Claire usually puts two-year-old Jaden in the buggy when she takes him out. Beach. Pardon? I want to go to beach. Beach? Yeah. Okay. Well, which have you got a car? Walking. Walking. Yeah. All right. No. I'm getting tired of walking. With Jaden, he doesn't talk. So if he is not very well or if he is hungry, he doesn't. He can't say that to Perrin that, you know. Plus she is foreign, so in a way it's like the blind leading the blind, you know. I always just picture Cameron's little face. I always just wonder when I'm not there what his facial expression is. always keep telling Perrin, tell her five times until you think that she's understood. It's just things like that. I just worry the whole time. <laughs> Hi, Clara. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> uh, we are walking. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we come back house. Claire finished her shift and came home to an empty house. She sets out to look for her children. And I'm, hung I'm hungry. I didn't know that you were going to go out today. And um, Jaden, he has to go in his push chair. You know push chair? Yeah. Push chair, yeah. Because yeah. he doesn't walk. I, I understand, <laughs> but really, I didn't know uh, we went to uh, another. Just first time, uh, I want to, I want to walk around yeah. near the here, and then uh, walking, walking, walking. It's just communication. To have to say all about the push chair and stuff, I just. I don't know, really. It just makes me feel so awful that Jaden has had to walk all the way to there and um, I didn't know about it and it just... I don't know. No, I just Jayden don't was... know. Mummy, Jaden was fine. He was. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tab has a student visa and is travelling around Europe on a gap year. She's been working for Andrew for just over a week. I actually like to wash dishes, so I'm always washing them. I like the mask that he uh, has right there and uh, the different things that he collects. It's all these little quirky things. And he has just so many different random things around, and they're random places. It's a little bit different, but it's, uh, it's, it's cool to not be the, the norm. So. It kind of says a lot about uh, about Andrew. It's nice to come home to a clean house, and it's nice to come home to someone who is just relaxed. It's, it's nice for the kids. <laughs> a big old clue. It's amazing when uh, Tab said that uh, she was from Texas. The first thing that Gemma said was, oh, I saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, I remember <laughs> that, and I was just like, <laughs> you know. True. Gemma and Andrew separated two years ago, and they both agreed that she should move out. She lives just a mile from the family home. I'd, I'd probably, well, I was on the brink of a big nervous breakdown. Um, I couldn't deal with life at, uh, at Andrew's house. I couldn't deal with my own life. It ended up having to come to the point where either I, I left um, the house or Andrew left. Um, this one is Freddie, his first official professional photo at his new school. Um, and he just looks every bit happy there. Um, does, it, does it make you sad that they're not here or have you got used to it? I do get sad, obviously, but, but I can see them every day, so it's, so that's, um, it's just a better, a better way this way and it's far better for them. Now they're happy and bouncy and thriving. <laughs> Story time. Are you ready now? Yeah. <laughs> Two, three, four. Tab's used to a family where the parents are separated. Her split up when she was a baby. Come on. Up here. Next to me. Next to me. Her prince is next to me. Oh, I'll go next to you. Can I get in the middle? Yeah. Because we can both can sit. Two, three, four, five, six, five. Six, <laughs> nine. Two, three, She's four, doing really five, good. Three, two, one. <laughs> she counted backwards. <laughs> she has special powers, I think. I got, I got. When Anna first moved in, I gave her a, a very detailed list of what had to happen every day. And if things don't happen, in the timing that they're meant to happen, the whole thing goes out the window. Poppy gets to bed late, she can't get up in the morning because she's gone to bed late, the homework hasn't got done. There are repercussions right down the line that I can't recover from. Everything becomes stressed, Poppy becomes stressed, I become unbelievably stressed. Things have been getting, building up and building up and I'm at a teeth gnashing stage. She's never had to do any of this and I probably haven't appreciated that she's never really cooked before. And is probably scared to ask. She seems to understand what needs to be done, but there's, a, there's no grip of the situation. There's no taking responsibility. And I don't even think she was wearing a watch this morning. And I was upstairs getting myself ready for my meeting. And I know they came downstairs to go to breakfast at quarter past seven. When I came down at 20 to eight, Poppy was just sort of quarter way through her cereal. And Anna's at the sink washing up in the sort of her labor intensive way, sort of quietly washing up, not being on Poppy's case, no vitamins out, no, no chivying along. She is a child that you have to, at this moment, whilst we're training her, chivy. I know that I have the ability to make people feel nervous, unintentionally, but um, I've probably gone over things, most things at least three times and written them down, and it's just not been happening in any area, really. Have you got a watch to wear? because I noticed that, that, that you're not really wearing a watch and everything is, you know, you've got to look at your watch and see. Yes, Do you have yes. one? Without a watch, you'll be hopeless. I haven't got the time to be saying, now you must do this, now you must do that. You must simply look at what you've got to do in the day mm -hmm. and work it out for yourself. Whenever you're preparing things, if you always wipe the work, the work surfaces, I can just see there's something there, I don't know what it is. Um, so just to keep the work surfaces clean and tidy mm -hmm. all the time and throw away the bits you've cut off and then start the next bit. Put this little thing on, tie it around your waist like this, and then, um, where's the drying up cloth? Get one of these and do it 
Now you're ready. It's just a question of getting into the habit and speeding up. Mm -hmm. You can do it. <laughs>has been with Jilly six weeks now. She's just finished one of her weekly calls to her parents in Brazil. What have you been able to say to them? Um, that I missed them. has been working for Claire and Pete for three months. What day is it? It's Thursday. Uh, it's a long way from here to the station. <laughs> Some of my friends says said, Ben, you are crazy. Why? Three boys. Really it's it will be hard. I didn't think before <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it must be hard for a stranger in a different country. You know, I don't want Perrin to be upset. I want her to be happy here and, you know, but I want everyone to be happy and I want the children to be happy and I want to be able to leave the house knowing that everyone's, everyone's happy, me, Perry and the children. people who are spending three and a half million quid are going to be buying, you know, thinking that they're going to be buying a pretty damn nice luxurious pad and they do not want extract events, um, cooking smells of any sort. It's been much, much better this week. Thank you. Yeah, thank I really you. appreciate the effort that you've made. No, I know, it's you, I mean, I felt a bit bad because I hadn't I couldn't give you any time at all last week. I sort of I was absolutely under huge pressure to catch up and I just want you to know that. Thank you. I've really noticed, particularly on, on the cleaning, you've really made a huge amount of effort and it looks the house looks fantastic now. Okay. Dear Anna, happy birthday. You're the best nanny in the world. Love Poppy. And twenty-six kisses. Cause he turned twenty-six. What? <laughs> Can I have some water, please? Uh, yes, I take part. Have, have you ever tasted champagne before? I it's tasted pink champagne. Well, did you like it? Yeah, but it was a very special pink champagne. Well, this is a pretty special pink champagne too. It's mm -hmm. Mummy's favourite pink champagne. 
Not pink champagne generally, but Monsieur Gosset's finest. Made by a little champagne company called Gosset. And it comes from Reims in France. And it's a very small. Um, this will be my. And this will be my favourite champagne too when I'm an adult. <laughs> Here's to Anna. In Portuguese, you said saúde. Tab's now been with Andrew for four months and is thinking about moving on. dangerous. I do not want to see you touching this or turning this on anymore. If you do it again, I will tell your dad and I'm serious, okay? I know, I know. It's awkward leaving the kids. Uh, really, I would like a partner to be at home and look after them, but um, I would like a sort of a permanent uh, relationship at home, I must be honest, but it's, it's, it's the second best thing. and I have a lot of time together. We spend some time together without the kids, uh, which is important, you know, to get, really get to know her. She actually wants me to come back next year and she would love to go to the States now and stuff like that, so it's kind of cool. She's from Texas, so it's good for her to um, explore the English living, if you like. You know, she's um, yeah, she's a lovely girl. She loves um, the kids and things. Um, I'm hoping to maybe meet up with her in America next year. So, um, but we're going to try and organise that. And if we can get it off the ground, it'll be really cool. But it'll be a shame to see her go. Tab stayed four and a half months. She's continuing her world tour. Andrew's looking for someone to step into her shoes. Perrin stayed five months, but then found a job in London. Claire couldn't face another search and asked a neighbour to help out. Anna stayed eight months. She's gone back to her family in Brazil. Jilly's writing a new ad.